Howdy guys, Diakis here. In this video we'll be talking about the familiar system in Riders of Icarus. The familiar system is the uh, pets and mounts of the game. So to start off we'll show you the familiar list. Uh, when you start out you have the option for a total of two, three, four, eight, eleven mounts. Now you can increase the number of mount slots you have by using the currency system that they have and buying slots using the Illum. Now Illum can be purchased, I would assume could be purchased in the cash shop. I haven't confirmed it yet because the cash shop is not available and they can be gotten in-game at least during the closed beta. So to start off there are two different types of mounts. Those that are ground mounts and those that can fly flying mounts. Mounts can be found all over the uh, the world and in particular there is something called a bestiary that will list all of the different mounts that are available within each zone. So, for the starting area, which is Bakar Forest, these are the different mounts that you can get. Now, mounts are rated by a star system, one star being the lowest, two star being a better grade, and then three, and so on and so on. Each mount is different in the fact of what skills they have. In particular, this one has the ability to increase the EP at level 5. The Grey Wolf has a health increase. The, this wolf here health increase, uh, melee attack along with another melee attack, and so forth so forth. So first and foremost let's go about learning how to tame a mount. So I'm going to come down here where there should be uh, moose around here. There we go, a caribou. During your st during the beginning area there will come a time where they have a quest that will teach you the tame skill. And it will go through the process of teaching you how to tame. But I will uh, show you it right here now. Taming a mount requires the skill and for you to sneak up and get close enough to where you see a, the space bar, tap it, and jump on top of it. The are, There are four icons to the on the, the north of the two bars, the success and fail bar. Those icons will tell you to press it in a particular direction like each one is part of the cardinal directions of your movement if you press that in the particular times you will actually increase your success rate if you fail it will increase your failure rate now as you can see I just failed this one and that doesn't mean that I can't try again so back my taming skill jump here we go. I just did the D command to increase my success rate. And D command again. And I have successfully tamed the King Caribou. Now, the bar itself, the success and failure rate, does progress uh, on its own, and that largely has to do with randomness and possibly 
your level versus the level of the uh, mob in question. I do not have the particulars of it, I am just speculating on that effect, but I do know that pressing those commands at the time does increase it. So now that I have it, I can open up my familiar and see that it is now here within my familiars list. Now, as you might have noticed right then and there, the pet had just leveled up. To level up the pets in this game just requires you to have them active and um, or ha have the familiar active and in world. So basically you can AFK level up the pets but I am not particularly sure if at a particular point in time it will see that you're AFK and stop the progression. I'm not sure. I do know that you being active on your pet does seem to level it up faster than just going AFK. So, uh, or excuse me, the familiar. Now, there is an additional um, thing that you can do with your pets. Let me go ahead and get off of this one. And that is to turn them into, a or turn them into actual pets. Now, during the starting area, there is also an additional quest that will teach you how to turn uh, familiars into pets. Basically, you require a pet scroll, and the pet scroll will be determined. Which pet scroll that you would need is going to be determined by the number of stars that you have. So, a common pet scroll would be used for a one star familiar. So let me go ahead and use that right now on the caribou that we just had. Okay, as you can see the image now has turned into a big bug dyed version of it with a flower in its ears or antlers in this case and you will have noticed that the pet the moose or the caribou has now shrunk down and has became a pet. Now the pets will actually fight alongside you and provide you support and or dealing damage or any of the skills that it has available. The most important things is that a new bar will appear just above your skill bar directly to the right of the pet icon you will see that there is the mode settings now if you use the tab the uh, pull up menu see that there are three different types attack mode will attack anything within range and will initiate combat without you doing anything guard mode will attack anything that attacks you but it will not initiate combat on its own unless you're being attacked and standby will not do anything unless you order it to do something. I typically like to have my pets set to guard mode. So with that the pet just now became a party member and will now attack alongside me. As you can see it's doing, hard, doing its best to deal damage to the caribou. And I might have picked a fight much higher uh, leveled deal, so I am going to go ahead and get out of this and run away. Okay, uh, in addition to being able to find pets within the general world, there are some pets that require 
certain uh, taming requirements. Uh, in particular, the uh, Taslan the Devourer is a pet that can't be tamed unless you get a special item. I think it's called a Shadowbind Tome that drops out of the beginning island off of the Bargain Mage uh, Wizards not wizards, bargain shaman, and you cannot tame this unless you have that item and it's in your inventory. Other mobs like Cold Tusk here is can be tamed after defeating a certain enemy. Cold Tusk is a mount of a bargain the Bar the bargain chieftain that you fight in the beginning area and you cannot tame him until you kill his master. Now in addition to that there are other notorious mobs that can be found within the world like this one here. This is a boss type mob that can be found in the beginning area. All of the three that I have mentioned before notice are two stars and are of much better quality than the other mounts that you have found within the starting area. So, next let's talk about flying mobs. Flying mobs in particular provide additional support as they can fly in zones that will allow you to. Now, if, let's take a look at the map first. The map is a in good indicator of what you c mounts can be used within the that area. As you can see, mounts have been, are just lit up green, so you can use mounts as familiars. You can also use pets as familiars, and you can use flying pets. So, with that, that means that the flying pets that you have available can be used within this zone. So I have two different flying pets available to me right now and we'll go ahead and summon this parakeet looking thing and take flight by pressing the spacebar. First and foremost you'll know that th notice that there's an altitude gauge listed here. The altitude of this pet can go up to 150. Now, holding spacebar will ascend vertically, and the higher it gets to the pet's max, it will start to show a, a flash, a little bit of flashing red, and a message will come across saying that you're reaching the pet's maximum altitude. If you go ahead and exceed this altitude, the pet will despawn, causing you to fall to your death, unless you reopen the pet. Now, the pet's uh, altitude is not the same. Let's go ahead and summon, oops, wrong one. Let's go ahead and summon this dragon. Alright, as you can see from this altitude, he can fly up to 900 meters in height. Unfortunately, it looks like the regional, the region max, at least for this section, is 180. So certain areas will have a Oh, I would assume all areas will have a region maximum that you can or cannot do. Once you reach that maximum, it will despawn, falling you to your death unless you reopen your pet. Now, for flying pets in particular, there is something called gliding, which you can do by double tapping your space bar, and it will provide a a faster form of flight, but it will decrease your altitude slowly over time. 
and this is also based off of the pet that you use. Now, standing still, if you double tap space, uh, it says you're supposed to be able to descend fast. But that feature doesn't seem to be working unless I have made a mistake. There is additional uh, pet commands that you can find in your settings. under key binding and familiars. The familiar uh, commands are used for the pets in particular. So let's get out of here. Let's go ahead and summon our my kangaroo familiar. And as you notice there is several skills listed here and you can actually come into your familiar commands and set key bindings to both toggle the mode which is, is this here you have the follow command to move command and your set target and each one of these quick slots would be for each of the active skills you have listed here so doing this you could uh, set your key bindings for this. Also, the familiar's info bar, uh, I believe, can be set to summon your different familiars. And if I you believe those are set to your familiar here, so possibly you will be able to summon those. I haven't quite tested that out, but that would be my assumption. Now, in addition to the pets having their own skills, there will eventually be mounted combat that will require you to have weapons. I have not got to a level yet that would provide me a weapon and teach me how to do that, but I will go over a something that I have found out that for the pet, whenever you switch to your pet, you will see that you have your entire skill bar is changed. And in doing so, you can actually set your. Uh, open up your pet icon, and you can click and drag your pet abilities directly to the skill bar if you so desire. And that is another way to. Uh, use your skill, the pet skills, but without having to set the pet commands. So uh, that is pretty much it for what I have regarding the familiar system. I hope it's been informative and if you have any questions you can let me know and I can try to expand on it further. Until next time, see you later.